Well, good morning, everybody, to our weekly Thursday Catalyst. Uh, this is your temporary uh, monitor this morning. Uh, John Kulo is on vacation. This is Tom Addis, Executive Director of the Southern Cal PGA. Uh, we have a great program this morning, uh, a repeat performance uh, from Robin Shelton, not repeating the same thing, but uh, a personal appearance. Uh, we're very, very happy to have Robin with us. Robin is our uh, Section Vice President, uh, the, the GM at Seacliff Country Club. Uh, Robin, we appreciate you being here, and uh, I think we're going to have a great uh, program this morning on marketing. So, Robin, just do it. <laughs> well, well, thank you for the kind words, TA. Thanks, everyone, for, for being here this morning. Um, and as, as Tom alluded to, uh, we're talking about marketing and uh, today's presentation I'm calling Just Do It. How to be like Nike and outperform the competition with your, your marketing strategy. So um, we're going to try to learn from Nike, see what they do, and see if there's parallels that, that we can use and apply to our, um, our world in golf. So looking at just some data, if you look at just data as far as, hey, what's happening in, in, in the world here, and if we're looking just at some sneakers or shoes, if you will, Nike totally outperforms um, their competition um, on a sales standpoint. So, uh, and right, I mean, hey, we're, it's almost double uh, what Adidas does. And hey, they absolutely um, crush Asics Puma and Under Armour. Uh, so I think, right, whatever, you know, whatever sales data that you look at, Nike totally outperforms. Nike wins, Nike crushes. Um, Nike just does way better than everybody in, the, in their in the competitive set. And again, that's why I'm kind of entitling this presentation is how to outperform, how to learn from what Nike does, because they um, have some sort of secret sauce that they're using. Um, where they outperform. So just some basic marketing stuff, because marketing is kind of the, the core of what we're talking about. And hey, if you go look at any kind of textbook, you know, they're gonna say that marketing is the action or business of promoting and selling products or services, including market research and advertising. And hey, that's as boring as the definition comes. That's as boring as, as one could be and just very, very bland. It's true. Um, but I don't think it really gets into the heart uh, of what marketing is. And I would say in the real world, marketing is anything that creates uh, interest in a product. It's anything that you do, anything that your company does, anything that your brand does, anything that you do that creates interest. And interest can come in tons of different ways. But marketing is, hey, it's, it's creating interest in the product. You know, so I shared to you, hey, the, the textbook world, and then I said, hey, um, what I think really happened. And if I keep talking about the, this real world, I believe that people don't buy goods and services. Uh, they buy stories, relations, and magic. And I don't think this can be stressed enough, um, shared enough, harped on enough. But people do not buy goods and services. They buy stories, relations, and magic. And we're going to keep coming back to this, and this will be a, a ever-changing uh, or ever-present theme, I should say, that people do not buy goods and services. They buy stories, relations, and magic. And what I think that one way, and probably the most important way, to help you create stories, relations, and magic is to have um, what I call hey, a, the product positioning statement. And a product positioning statement is something that says very clearly uh, what your identity is or what your brand is. So your product positioning statement basically it just answers the question, who are you? Um, and really defines, hey, who are you? What makes you unique? What makes you special? And again, this product positioning statement by identifying what makes you unique, what makes you special, really helps you create kind of the stories, relations, and magic. And I think your product positioning statement doesn't have to 
follow a set formula. It doesn't have to follow a set structure. It can take on anything. But what it does is it says, hey, what answers, answers what makes you unique? It provides a clear identity. It provides a clear image. And it really identifies, hey, what is your product advantage? And I think that, hey, great companies use the product positioning statement as one of their most important tools. They use that to really clearly identify what their brand identity is and really give them a laser-like focus on the product and, hey, what makes them unique. So let's talk about Nike. That's why we're here, right? So the question is, hey, what is Nike selling? What makes their product unique? And as I said, hey, we're here talking about Nike's marketing strategy and how to outperform the competition. And one way you have to do that is know who you are, know what your brand identity is, and know what makes you unique and know what makes you different. So again, I asked you, what is Nike selling? So just think about that for a few seconds. Let that dwindle or move around in your brain and say, what is Nike selling? What makes Nike the top dog? What is Nike's product? So is Nike selling shoes? Is Nike in the footwear business? If you went to somebody at Nike and you said, hey, what do you sell? If you went to somebody at Nike headquarters in the executive office and said, hey, what do you sell? Would they say shoes? Again, asking, hey, what is Nike selling? If you ask somebody, would they tell you that, hey, we sell apparel? Again, think about, hey, what is Nike selling? If you ask people, if you ask Nike, if you ask Nike executives, if you ask Nike marketers, what are you selling? Would they say apparel? Would they say shirts? Right? Is that what Nike is selling? Is Nike selling shoes, apparel, shirts? Do they sell clothing? Again, what is it that Nike is selling? So that's the question that's getting our brain thinking right now is, hey, what is Nike selling? And I'm saying, okay, let's look at, hey, what is Nike's marketing strategy? So here's a couple ads, a couple marketing strategies, a couple marketing ideas. And if you look at this ad, I don't know that they're selling a shirt, right? They're showing a young man who's overweight, who's sweating. And it says, find your greatness. There's nothing in there about a shirt. There's nothing in there about shoes or apparel. They're not talking about, hey, look at the fit of the shirt. They're not talking about, hey, look at the color of the shirt. They're saying, hey, find your greatness. There's another Nike ad that says, anticipate greatness, right? This is somebody who looks like they're a very accomplished athlete, looks like they're a sprinter. And notice, right, if we kind of go back and forth between these two, nothing in there talks about a shirt, nothing in there talks about the size, the cotton, right, what it's made out of, right? Nothing talks about the fit, the color, the durability of the shirt. It just says, hey, find your greatness, anticipate your greatness. Hey, here's another Nike ad, same thing. Find your greatness. A little kid at the top of a high dive with people or other kids looking on. This is the ad. It says, find your greatness. Again, absolutely nothing to do with clothing just to say find your greatness same thing nike ad somebody running athlete taking it easy won't take you anywhere 
right? These are the ads that Nike is using. Again, nothing about the size of the shoe, the fit of the shoe, the shirt, where it's made from, the cut, nothing. It seems to be selling something else. If you're picking up on a theme here, again, another Nike ad. It shows us some swooshes on the shoes, some runners, a runner. Twice the guts, double the glory. Again, nothing that seems to portray anything um, about what you think a shoe is about or an apparel is about. Your only limit is you. Yeah, Nike, right? There's a swoosh on the clothing. There's a swoosh on the shoe. That's all you can see, but nothing about, again, the size, the cotton, the fabric, the fit. Serena Williams, Matt Wimbledon. You can take the superhero out of her costume, but you can never take away her superpowers. And again, the theme here is that there's absolutely nothing to do with what's called the feature of the product, right? We in golf, right? We talk about, hey, 54 holes, right? 10 tennis courts, 36 station driving range. Right, 80 gas powered carts, 10,000 square foot putting greens. Nike isn't doing that at all. They're not talking about a feature. There's no feature dump, right? We sell clubs, right? And we talk about the CC, the size of, of the club head, right? The movable weight technology, you know, the weight of the shaft, right? The dimensions of the grip, that stuff we talk about, the features. Nike hasn't once made any reference to a feature of a product. Another ad, everyone, everyone loses games, but few change them. Right, it's like there's something that's going on here with Nike. It's very motivational, it's very aspirational. Again, nothing to do with the size of the helmet, the fit of the helmet, the protective cushion in it, right? The face mask, how thick or how durable it is. There's something beyond that product. There's something beyond the features they're talking about that they continually go to, right? Find your greatness, inspire greatness, expect greatness. Everyone loses games, but few change them. Champions don't stay down, right? The future. This is an ad from Nike, a clothing company that we think is a clothing company. Hey, a shoe company, an apparel company. You can't even make out a shirt in the picture. You can't even make out a shoe. Why on earth would a clothing company, a shoe company, or what we think be an apparel company have an ad that we can't even see any part of their product? Pretty darn good out here. You can't see it, it's blurry. Too fast, too bad. She was born to do this. Can't even see a Nike swoosh on any of the clothing. Can't even see the product. But there's something beyond the product. There's something beyond the benefit, the shoe, the size of it. The material that's made out of every that's made out of it. Be the first champion like you, then make sure you're not the last. Write a Nike ad, and you can see on it, it's got the Nike swoosh, it says just do it. The cap that the swimmer is wearing isn't even a Nike cap. 
We don't even know if this person is wearing anything Nike. But hey, they are selling something that is not just the apparel. It's not just the shoe. And hey, and then Nike has this incredible slogan. We've all heard of it. Just do it. Just do it. Hey, what does that really mean? They couldn't have a better slogan that matches what their marketing is. Hey, because everything that they talked about there, everything we saw in those ads was about achievement, aspiration, inspiration. and being confident in what you do and keep doing it. So while just do it is catchy, it ties incredibly to their marketing and hey, what makes them unique and what makes them special. So when we started, I said, hey, what is Nike selling? Are they selling shoes? Are they selling apparel? Are they selling shirts? And hey, the brand the product position statement makes a clear identity of what the brand is and what they're selling. So <clears throat> this is Nike's product positioning statement. For serious athletes, Nike gives confidence that provides the perfect shoe for every sport. Notice, right, the, the key words there. For serious athletes, Nike gives confidence. Nike isn't selling a shirt or apparel or shoes, right? They're selling confidence. They're selling achievement. They're selling accomplishment for serious athletes. And who doesn't want to be an athlete? Who doesn't want to be better at what they do? Who doesn't want to be in a sport or competing in a sport and want to be better? I remember the last time I ever heard somebody playing a sport, competing in a sport, saying, hey, I'm okay being average. I'm okay being what I was. But Nike gives confidence. Nike is selling confidence. Nike is selling accomplishment. Nike is selling winning. But they sell confidence. Not a shirt. Everything that they're doing is about confidence and accomplishment. So, what are other similar companies selling? Right, we talk about, hey, this is what Nike is selling, accomplishment, achievement, confidence. Let's talk about some of the other, you know, there's similar companies. Okay, this is Adidas. Right, this is the Adidas ad. Right, what's the message there? Is there any message that's, sticking out or coming through. Here's Reebok. What's Reebok selling? Just people wearing clothes. Here's Adidas. This is an Adidas ad. And they still have a logo and a shoe. Right? Think about the difference in the Nike ad. There's something in there that when we saw the runner of just the shoe, there was aspirational. There was some sort of an accomplishment. There was some sort of confidence. And this is saying, hey, here's a shoe. Talk about a difference, right? Nike selling confidence, accomplishment, achievement. Adidas saying, hey, here's a shoe. Here's Reebok. Right, one of their ads. What are they selling? 
Life's a beat dance to it. Actually, they say, hey, we have clothes. Another Reebok ad. This is just a person wearing clothes. They're not doing anything, right? They're not out in the field, right? They're not out on a track. They're not out in their area where they compete. They're not on a tennis court. Reebok again, person wearing clothes. Same thing. None of this says, hey, I'm accomplishing. None of this says, hey, that I'm achieving. None of this says, hey, this is what makes me unique. Right? Reebok's just saying, hey, we have clothes. This is Old Navy here. This is an Old Navy ad. Same thing, right? This just says, hey, we have clothes. We have clothes that might be fashionable, but there's nothing in there that says, hey, that matches what Nike is doing. Nike is very clear on who they are and what their product positioning statement is. Achievement, accomplishment, confidence. Old Navy, a little blurry. I'm sorry, but hey, shorts for $9. Nothing says I have a great product like, hey, I'm the lowest cost out there. There's a market for that, no doubt. There is absolutely a market for the low cost leader. There is a market for somebody who does something the least expensive. But that is a type of product positioning statement, but it's just not what Nike does. This is another old Navy ad. Again, what does this ad say? It just says, hey, here's clothing. Here's clothing. That's it. It's like us. Hey, here's a driver. Here's a golf hole. Here's a dining room. Okay, Lululemon. Lululemon has been taking the world by storm in the last couple of years. And notice every single one of these ads is telling you something different. Right, hey, this is just, hey, athletic wear. We have clothing. Same thing, we have clothing that might be fashionable. Hey, this is people buy stories, relations, and magic. The story is, hey, you can be outside. You can do your stuff in our clothing. More Lululemon. Practice of self-discipline. This is yoga. Right? Just saying, hey, you can wear our clothes in more than yoga. Another thing here, right? <clears throat> Again, this is yoga. You can use our clothes and other things. So what are these companies selling? Right, if we look at kind of the companies that we looked at, there are the last couple of slides. Each are selling athletic apparel. Right, everyone's got athletic apparel. Reebok, Nike, Adidas, New Lemon, Old Navy. Nike is saying, hey, you can achieve. Right, There is achievement that comes with our product. Right, achievement, accomplishment, confidence. This is what Nike is selling in their ads. Adidas is saying, hey, you can be athletic. Right, we said there was a picture of the five Asian women kind of jogging, being out. You can be athletic. Hey, Reebok says we have athletic clothes. Old Navy, right, they put the dollar sign everywhere so we have clothes at good prices. And Lululemon says, hey, you can be comfortable. Every single one of these companies is selling pretty a pretty darn similar product, but the marketing strategy is totally different. And I think Nike has the greatest clarity on what they're selling, right? Confidence, accomplishment, achievement. So 
again, products are similar, but the marketing behind them, the marketing strategy is totally different. And I think it comes down to their product positioning statement, knowing who they are, having a clear identity, clear brand identity, and being laser focused on it. All right, so Phil Knight. Phil Knight is the founder of Nike. Nike is a marketing-oriented company. Stop right there. Nike is a marketing-oriented company. It's not a shoe company. It's not an athletic apparel company. It is a Nike. Nike is a marketing-oriented company. Nike's whole deal is marketing, right? It's not the shoe. It's not the apparel. But he does say the product is our most important marketing tool. So Nike is a marketing-oriented company, and the product is our most important marketing tool. But Nike is about the marketing. Their marketing strategy is very clear. Creating confidence, right? Confidence, accomplishment, achievement. If you go to Nike's Instagram, this is Nike's Instagram here. Right, these are just six photos from Nike. None of these look like they're selling apparel. None of these are focused on the shirt. None of these are focused on the shoe. There's all some sort of accomplishment, achievement, confidence. Right? You've got boxers. You've got an Olympic gymnast. The Red Sox winning something. Tiger Woods in the bottom. Again, everything is about achievement and accomplishment that builds confidence. Nothing about the product. More from Nike. I mean, Nike's Instagram again. Right? You've got a, a gentleman on the top left who looks like an serious athlete. You've got a gentleman in the top middle who looks like he's a marathon runner, finished a marathon. Top right, you've got a, an overweight young man who's accomplishing something, confident that he's doing it. Bottom left, an athlete playing football with one arm. We're going to come back to that picture in a little bit. There's the Serena Williams. And again, everything is about, hey, comp, confidence, accomplishment, achievement, and what they're selling. So again, Keep these photos in the back of your mind as we talk about Nike's Instagram. And then move to Adidas. Right? There is a huge difference on the marketing between this and this. And I said, hey, if you remember what Adidas was selling, it was, hey, you can be athletic. Nike selling achievement accomplishment. They're saying, hey, you can be athletic. And that's what all of these pictures kind of say, right? There's four um, pictures of women in, in athletic wear that are all fit. There's a dude in the middle, bottom. He looks fit. And, hey, here's our shoes. You can be athletic. So that's Adidas on Instagram. Old Navy, back to Instagram. And I said, hey, they sell clothes at good prices, right? Everything here is a direct look at the clothing. So again, there's a difference between selling, athlete, selling accomplishment, achievement, and confidence with Nike. Hey, Adidas is saying, hey, you can be athletic. And hey, Old Navy saying we have clothes. And again, this comes down to, hey, the product positioning statement. What makes you special? What makes you unique? What is your brand that is different? And Nike's brand that's different is, hey, we're selling confidence, accomplishment, and achievement. All right, more. So now that we've seen this picture of what Nike is and what Nike has been selling, then we're going to go a little bit more deeper into seeing the accomplishment, the confidence that Nike creates. Stop dreaming, start working. Again, not even anything in there about clothing. But things like this make Nike very aspirational. They say, hey, it's motivational. 
that makes me have confidence or want to have confidence and want to achieve. Again, same thing. There's not a, any clothing anywhere in this ad. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Accomplishment, achievement, confidence. Third ad in a row that I've shown you that says, hey, if you ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance. Play inside, play for the world. This is, hey, in regards to the COVID, um, it's been around. But everything comes back to, again, accomplishment, achievement, confidence. If you've ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, hey, all of us at some point in our life have wanted to imagine being in a, you know, making the putt on the 18th hole for the U.S. Open. Hey, three full count, bottom of the ninth in baseball, right? Three seconds left on the clock in basketball. This is what Nike is going after. The confidence piece of things. Hey, achieving. Same thing. Don't wait until you've won a ring to play like it. Hey, they do an incredible job with the Nike swooshes. You ever notice Nike's apparel is very, very similar every time in the sense that there's not a lot of pattern. There's not a lot of stripes. That Nike swoosh is very visible on their ads, but on their clothing, right? Tiger Woods wears a solid shirt every time. Roy McIlroy, solid shirt every time, but that logo is very clear. Don't wait until you want a ring to play like it. There's something, again, this is the confidence piece that says, hey, you can do more, you can accomplish, you can achieve. Quality has no boundaries. Same thing, the ads here just are different from what everybody else is doing. Depending on how old you are, you may remember Bo Jackson, double sport athlete, right? Played baseball, played football. Was a Nike guy. Not a whole lot of Nike swooshes here. But again, hey, you can be more. You can achieve. What's the story? What's the story, relation, and magic in this picture? Right? The story, the relation, and magic. Hey, it's the Air Jordan. It's the Michael Jordan um, kind of logo. It's not what Old Navy was doing. It's not just saying, hey, here's a shirt. There's a story. There's a relation. There's magic behind this. Again, they, they could have just shown sneakers. They could have just shown a shirt. That's what they've done. You don't have to change who you are to change the world. just do it again accomplishment achievement nothing that just says hey here's a driver hey here's a picture of our dining room hey here's a picture of a golf bag here's a picture of a shirt a couple slides ago we showed you the instagram photos of nike and there was the one uh, there was this picture without the text Male one arm playing football. Who would have who would ever think a kid like me would go pro? Me. That screams the accomplishment and the achievement of saying, hey, there that you can do it. You can achieve. You can have confidence to become everything you want to be. Same thing. It's only a crazy dream until you do it. Nike is saying, hey, you can do it. You can have confidence. You can achieve. And it's totally different from what the Adidas is selling and saying. Totally different from what 
Old Navy is doing. It's totally different what Reebok is doing. All right, so how do we apply this? How do we apply this to our world? How do we learn from Nike? I say question number one you have to answer is what makes your product and service unique? Right, what makes your product and service unique? You have to ask yourself that question, whether that's your instruction business, whether that's your consulting business, your golf course, your country club, your golf. Second question you gotta ask yourself, why do consumers use your product or service? Why do people want to take golf lessons? Why do people want to come to you for golf lessons? Why do people want to join a private country club? Why do people want to join your club? Why do people play pub public golf on the weekends? Why do they go to your golf course? And then, hey, three, what is your product position statement? What is it that is very, that makes you unique? What is your brand identity? So you can use that to be laser-like focused on what you do. You can see Nike is very laser-like focused on creating confidence. There's no ad of Nike just saying, hey, here's the shirt. Here's the microfibers in it. Here's what the shirt's made out of. It's very clear, laser-like focus on, hey, we're creating confidence. So those are the, the, that's where you start. That's how you apply kind of this Nike stuff. One, what makes your product service unique? Two, why do consumers use your product? Why do people come to you? And three, what is your product positioning statement? What is that brand identity, that clear focus that you can always stick to? Okay, so what are you selling in your world, in the space that you're in, in the marketplace that you are at? What are you selling? Right, are you selling golf instruction? And hey, if we take a step back, golf instruction right we've probably all been to golf courses or seen things that we may see something that says hey a sign that says lessons available hey that's probably the worst type of marketing that, that you can do just says hey i'm here right we've seen some that probably say hey pricing for lessons hey want to become better at golf I see Bill Smith, short game specialist. But what are you selling golf instruction? So I ask you, hey, is that really golf instruction? Or are you selling the goals and achievement, right? Do people take lessons because they want a goal, right? Do they set a goal of saying, hey, I'm a 10 handicap. I want to be a five. I say, hey, I want to hit a drive 250 yards. Is there a goal or achievement? Is that really what you could be selling? Nike's not selling clothes. Nike's selling confidence, right? Golf instruction. Could you be selling? goals and achievements. Hey, what about skill improvement? Could you just be selling, not necessarily the instruction, but becoming better at something? Hey, are you selling time with family? Especially right now, hey, kids, parents, husbands, wives, family time, is that what it could be? Are you selling golf instruction or are you selling, hey, time together? as a family what about golf are you selling golf right are you a golf course are you trying to sell golf right and talk about you know your seven thousand yard golf course with 82 bunkers and seven lakes that's the feature but hey what are you selling right do people play golf to have hang time with friends Hey, is it because our people want to just relax, have recreation outdoors? Is that what it could be? How about just an escape from what's going on? Is that why people play golf? If it's any one of those things, why do we always say, hey, seven lakes, 84 bunkers, 
7,000 yard golf course, 150 acres. Why is that what we promote? Hey, what are, are we selling membership? If that's our thing. If we're selling membership, what is it that we're really selling? Is it really membership or is it something more? Right? Is it relationships? Is it time with friends? Is it, hey, is it just a lifestyle? Is it that third place that people hang out? Hey, do people join the private club for competition? Some clubs do. And hey, and if you're joining a club, a membership, for any of these reasons, Why are you talking about the banquet room that can seat 300? Right? Why is it? What is it about the 64,000 square foot clubhouse? What is it about the 200 acre property? So again, hey, think about hey what you are selling. All right. So we said, hey, what are other similar companies selling? This is a slide we talked about earlier. We talked about Nike. We talked about Adidas. We talked about Reebok. Old Navy, what it was, what they were selling. Right, Nike is saying, hey, you can achieve. Adidas is saying, you can be athletic. Reebok says, hey, we have athletic clothes. Old Navy says, we have clothes at good prices. And Lululemon says, hey, you can be comfortable in anything that you're doing. And hey, we just talk about instruction. Sometimes people just say, hey, we have instruction at good pricing. One way to market. Creating a love of the game. Probably a little bit of a higher level. All right, because you're marketing be geared all around making you a better golfer. Hey, what if your marketing was, hey, just for serious good players? Hey, what if your marketing was specifically specially geared for a specific area of the game, right? We don't think we're not just selling golf instruction. We're not just selling clothes and apparel. Nike is selling something specific. And then... Just do it. All right? If Nike is selling confidence, they've got an incredible company statement and couple incredibly line, a story, relation, and magic that builds confidence. It says, hey, just go out there and just do it. So with that, Bryce, I am finished and we'll open up for anybody who's got questions or any questions relating to marketing strategy, Nike's marketing strategy, or how to apply that to, you know, our world and the club and golf industry that we live in every day. As of right now, oh, sorry, Tom, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Bryce, that if anybody has a question, there's the question link. Click on that and uh, Bryce will cover. Absolutely. We'll give it a, a minute or two here, but as of now, Robin, there are no questions, okay? Okay, fantastic. Could get everybody out early then. Robin, thank you very much. Uh, really, really good. And uh, I was particularly interested in in the marketing to create interest in a product because uh, I've had an old saying that um, – the disinterested become interested and the interested become motivated, in this case, motivated for your product. So thank you for that statement. So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, next week, the 23rd, uh, we have Mark King from uh, former CEO of Adidas and TaylorMade, as you probably know, but now the CEO with uh, Taco Bell. So quite an interesting change there. And Mark will talk about that. And Robin, uh, once again, uh, you've been a dedicated uh, presenter uh, on uh, our Catalyst programs, and we really appreciate that and appreciate your time uh, and great work. And thanks, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.